welcome to this Plant Factory and Plant Catalog tutorial. With the Plant Factory integration plugin, which is included with the professional and enterprise versions of Plant Factory, and with the full Plant Catalog, you can easily convert all plant materials into native Redshift materials. To use this new feature, you will need Redshift 3.0.46 or up, with the new OpenColor IO Color Management, and Maya 2020 or up. The first step in Maya is to set the current render engine to Redshift before I even add a plant. This is required so that the plugin knows for which renderer to create materials. Now, using the Plant Factory menu entry, I will open a plant that was exported to the procedural TPF file format. In this case, I will go with a plant from the Plant Catalog collection. After the plant has been loaded, I can go to Edit Plant and adjust any available plant parameters or even create a new plant variation. Changing a parameter or generating a variation will trigger both a plant and a material recomputation. So you could still go back to the render settings, change the render engine to Redshift and then edit the plant to force a material update. While the plant is still procedural, the plugin uses a lower resolution proxy mesh in the viewport for shorter computation times. To get the final quality mesh and the texture maps extract to the project folder, I need to convert the plant to a Maya object. In the conversion dialog, I select my project folder and then I can choose to convert the plant either to a static or to an animated mesh with wind. This animated mesh can be a baked point cloud animation or a rotational bone rig with a configurable number of bones. Specific to Redshift here is the sprite node setting. This will put any alpha maps in the material graph into a sprite node instead of connecting the alpha maps to the regular opacity channel of the material. The sprite node drastically improves the render times of overlapping material alphas in Redshift, which for example is a very common scenario with leaves and plants. So we suggest using the setting for best performance. But because the sprite node does have a few limitations in other areas, which are described in Redshift's documentation, you can still uncheck the box to receive materials with the default opacity alpha handling. Now I can click Convert. For static plants, the conversion is quite fast and will take just a few seconds. When converting an animated plant, the conversion duration will depend on the frame rate, the number of bones and the overall animation duration that you set up in the conversion options. Now that the plant has been converted, let's open the Hypershade window. In here we see all the Redshift materials that were created by the plugin. All the texture maps are linked to the correct slots and all material properties were transferred, for example the sprite node, or translucency or two-sided materials or other settings. The plant can be immediately rendered with Redshift now. We hope you enjoy this first iteration of our Redshift support and please look out for more material conversion options in future releases as we continue to evolve our render engine material conversions. Thanks for watching and happy rendering.